Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Daily Word. Today is Wednesday, December 15th. We are amazingly halfway through the month of December. We are deep in our Advent journey together today. We are going to talk about Psalm 125. But, you know, I got to thinking this morning, this week, we are going to light the fourth candle, the Advent candle of love. And it seems like just yesterday, you know, I stood in the pulpit on that last Sunday in November and talked about us as a congregation and churches together as we light Advent candles, having the audacity to think that one candle, a candle of hope, could change the world. And now here we are, these many weeks later, and this Sunday we'll light the fourth candle, and four candles will bring light. And I believe we still have the audacity to think that lighting one candle of love has the potential to change the world, and that love could then somehow explode because love is abiding. So it's an interesting part of our journey that we're on together. Tonight is our Advent Wednesday night. You're welcome to join us. We'll have dinner at six o'clock and then our study. We're going to talk about Mary and Elizabeth and their um, deep abiding faith and how they can show us how to live our lives. But this morning, um, I've chosen just this very first verse from Psalm 125. And I think it's an important verse for us as we think about our Lenten journey, I mean, our, I'm sorry, our Advent journey, our Advent journey, goodness, and, and what it means for us um, in this deep in this season and how like Mary and Joseph and Zechariah and Elizabeth, that we are part of this story. And this story, as we've been hearing it from Luke, has deep roots for us, and it helps to give us deep roots in our faith journey. Hear these words. Those who trust in God are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. Psalm 125, this first verse, gives us a grounding, a reminder of the presence of God in our lives. You know, this idea of Messiah, this idea of the incarnation of God, wasn't a new idea that just popped up in the Gospels. We go all the way back, of course, and you, you hear me read from Isaiah many times about the prophet being foretold. We hear words, um, this week we're going to hear words from Micah, who foretell the coming of the Messiah. And this isn't a new story. It's a much anticipated event. As a matter of fact, throughout history, you know, when times were tough in the journey of God's people, it's then that they pined for a Messiah. When times were good, it's then that they kind of went on their own way, kind of, kind of like we do, you know. And so this story that now unfolds in the Gospels, the story that now unfolds through players in the story, like Mary and Joseph and Zechariah and Elizabeth. These people, now think about this story. You know, Mary and Joseph are engaged. Um, they're not ready to have kids. They haven't even gotten married yet. And this unlikely event, the angel coming to Mary and saying, look, here's what's going to happen to you. And then Joseph, you know, who must have been a person of deep faith, um, who had in his mind, the scripture says us, to silently divorce Mary, to break off the engagement, hears from God and follows through. It seems to me his roots and Mary's roots in the story are deep. And they decide that they could weather this storm together. Zechariah and Elizabeth, we've talked about them. They're way too old to have kids. They, um, Elizabeth shouldn't get pregnant. But God comes to them. God comes to Zechariah when he's getting incense in the Holy of Holies and says, here's what's going to happen. They accept the challenge. Zechariah is, 
is mute for all these months. Elizabeth stays in the house for the first five months of this pregnancy. But their roots, their roots in the faith, they run deep. This story for them that's unfolding is God's story. We talked about it last Wednesday night. It's true that um, when we hear Mary visits Elizabeth and the baby leaps in Elizabeth's womb, and the scripture says that Elizabeth is then filled with the Holy Spirit. Their roots in the story are deep. They figured out that because of God, they could weather any storm. Now here we are. We're at the end of a rather another, another rather difficult year. As if 2020 wasn't bad enough, 2021 has had its own set of challenges. Not, not a lot has changed in some of these challenges. And then we have a bunch of new challenges. Here we are. And we are about to embark in a new year. And I've, I've heard people say, look, I'm not, I'm not going to go into 2022 until it shows me um, what's going to happen. Well, we're going to go headlong into 2022 no matter what. Here's this reminder for us in this season of Advent. Those who trust in God are like, like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abides forever. Changing wind don't blow us over. The news that Mary and Joseph and Zechariah and Elizabeth got didn't blow them over because they had deep roots in their faith. It's true for us. You know, we are part of this story. It, it continues to unfold in us and through us and around us and with us. Every week we light a candle, hope, peace, joy, and love. It dispels the darkness and it helps our roots to become deeper. We are deep in this story. We are grounded in the hope of the story. And we too, because our roots are deep, we can't be moved. Oh, it doesn't mean the wind doesn't blow, because it does. It doesn't mean it's going to rain, it's not going to rain today, because it looks like. It's going to rain today. And eventually, you know, it's going to snow. And all that's going to happen around us. And, and a new year is going to come, whether we like it or not. The questions now that I seem to get every day are, are you ready for Christmas? Are you ready for Christmas? And I usually say yes. Because, you know, presents are bought and, and well, bulletins aren't done yet. Sermons aren't done yet. Although, I have to tell you, um, I didn't sleep a wink last night for whatever reason it was. But this Christmas Eve sermon that I've been thinking about began to formulate itself in the middle of the night last night. We're not blown about by the wind. We have deep roots in the, this story. And the incarnation of Christ moves in you and it moves in me and it continues to shape us and to guide us. Ah, oh, there's such good news in this story. Advent, Advent is a touchstone. It's an opportunity for us to breathe. It's an opportunity for us to let this season ground us in our faith to something bigger and weightier than all of us something more solid and more substantial than the moment that we're living in. You know, I'm, I'm not very steady on my feet these days. Um, I'm having lots of issues. But even in the midst of that, I feel like because my roots are so deep in this faith story, and because this story continues to move in me and in the life of you and of this congregation, that I'm not, I'm not blown around. My roots are so deep that I can weather any storm. Mary and Joseph weathered it. Zechariah and Elizabeth weathered it. And friends, we too weather it together. And that's good news, I believe, 
for you and I. We, we are connected to something bigger than us in this story. And that's good news. We are like Mount Zion, we who trust in God. We can't be moved. But God, God abides in us forever. It's a good word that I needed today, and I hope it helps you and, and gives you a sense of hope and peace and the deep roots that you too have in your life. Enjoy the day halfway through the month of December. Know of God's love that surrounds you. Know of my love for all of you. Hopefully I'll see you tonight at six o'clock and then tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.